around about 2002. I get to school and uh, there's a gentleman in my office who wants to see me by the name of Craig Callahan. He said, um, uh, I'd like to have a job at Gisborne Boys High School. And at that time, of course, I'm fully staffed. Um, and I said, well, Craig, what, what do you, what's your specialty, what do you teach? And he said, whakaaro. Traditionally, when, when Māori was a dominant culture in Aotearoa, whakaaro was one of the frontal posts that held up all knowledge Māori. This was our written language. Our aim was to re-establish the mana of whakaaro within the school system. And so for these high highs, how are you going to work that up? We've got a few approaches that we use here in the whakaaro department. One is no yeah. barriers. Okay. No barriers teaching. If a barrier appears, you break it down, you crush it, you destroy it as quick as you can. Sugar, you do something? Yep, I'll bring it back in the cupboard. And in the end, they just expect there's nothing to inhibit their learning. Once they get used to that, then they start dreaming. Then they start turning their dreams into reality. Then they start expecting the dreams to come to fruition. You've got this out of control, motivated student. And all you've got to do is make sure that the pathway is clear for them. Craig spent an awful lot of time traveling around the countryside, talking to NCQA. In the first year, 2004, it was introduced at level two. They had an old boat shed out the back. Facilities were so cramped that at times we thought, oh, okay, is this vision really um, going to come to fruition? But um, we stuck with it and 10 years on, we were lucky enough that the board gave funding for a new facility. There's a proverb that, that goes, te uira, a te kanapa, he tohu mō te toa, which talks about uh, lightning um, of a warrior. It's like the lightning flash. Where when you see it flash in the sky, it's the potential that we see sparking in the woods. Coming from Auckland, uh, I had a different background where instead of doing whakairo, they, they did a lot of tagging around the streets. And then yeah. coming here, introducing myself to whakairo, it kind of opened my mind. This is about a young man who has two guardians, Manai. The guardians will help look after this young man throughout the time in his life. Once they see that they can achieve in Fakaro in a culturally engaging uh, program, then they can also uh, engage in all sorts of other areas and curriculum areas in the school. We've got the English department coming over, and there's four units where the boys can talk about how they carve. Heaps of the boys for their speeches. We had to, well, some boys had to bring an item and boys brought their whakaaro boards to show them for their speech and all the boys passed using it. Te Reo Māori is another one. Instead of just straight hi highs, you turn them into whakarades. A lot of them didn't want to learn the language, now they're hooked and they're joining the kapahaka again. Thing that was encouraged was to a kind of tainer, which is yeah, like uh, the older ones helping the younger ones, and yeah, that was a that was a big thing. So when I started, there was the older ones. They helped us when they left. We were the older ones. I oh, see so you already started here. You just start, and when it's really in, that's when you grab your mullet. All it does is breed success, and and the success and the standard and the quality of the work continues to grow and grow and grow. This is a really important graph the non-Māori students have actually dropped off, whereas our Māori students are continuing to go up and they outperformed our um, non-Māori students. That's, that's a pretty amazing figure there. It vindicates our decision to put the energy and time into this discipline. 